I'm Charles Siratak, president of KSLU, uh, president of KSLU since 2017. And what I'd like to give you the opportunity of is a brief tour of how KSLU operates. We're an internet-based radio broadcasting station. Uh, up until 2008, we operated on the AM band. We've been broadcasting nonstop since 2010, uh, and except for a brief outage in transmission during 2018 over budgetary conflicts, we have been successful in our efforts to maintain the tradition of radio at St. Lawrence University. This has been the best year for the station in probably since, well, I can safely say since when I showed up in 2016. We have 100 listeners for one of our shows, Blues Day 2's. <sighs> Let me just get this off. Giant bear pelt of a thing. It's not actually bear, it's beaver. Yeah. <laughs> Bears would be a little cruel. <laughs> but anyway, let's get into how the uh, station operates. There are some other shows, like Monday, The Junkyard, with our events coordinator and headhunter, talent scout, kind of, uh, Sylvia Gilbert. She has a program at uh, Monday at some point. I can't quite remember when. To operate on KSLU, you only need really two things. One, a phone, like this one, and two, this computer. As long as you have these two things, and you don't really need the phone as long as you know how to use the computer, this is just, you know, very nice to have, you can broadcast on air. We don't really care what you broadcast, uh, so long as it's within reason, and we are completely open to whatever slot you want. We don't have too many shows past 10, except for uh, Johnson's, but... Uh, we have no issue. If you want to go on at 3 a.m., you can go ahead and do that. <laughs> to broadcast after establishing an IP connection with the Backbone server, which is what you would call an intermediary kind of piece of software, it gives us an embeddable link like YouTube does. You know how you embed a, a link for YouTube onto a different web page. Uh, Backbone does the same for radio. Uh, we then take this embed link and put it on TuneIn or other you know, platforms, and we also have a website in which that link is also available. The website also has a schedule, which was updated this year for the first time in eight years, thanks to me. To go live, all you have to do is hit live microphone, but first what you want to do is, what I would do, recommend, is establish at least a couple songs ahead. Here's how the slides work. Slider number one is microphone number one. This dial controls uh, these master speakers here. You can also plug in a headphone to this or this or that or that and control these volumes independently so you don't get um, feedback because you have to manually mute the master speakers. There's no button that does it for you. Um, that function used to work for this uh, monitor but that broke along with one of the sliders and it was our main reason for getting this little baby here which has rendered all of this stuff irrelevant this 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 does it all for us so you go live by hitting this button that says live microphone and when you go live you're listening to KSLU serving St. Lawrence University since 1944 and under WCAD since 1922 this is the musical mystery tour with Charlie Sirithek and you're going to be listening to Blue Peter Radio Silence here on KSLU the North Country's best college radio station then you go to this. This is live, by the way. <laughs> Pretty good song. But let's say you get a text message or something. You get viewer, listener feedback, and they hate Blue Peter. I just got rid of Blue Peter. <laughs> That's how they do it on air, usually. Uh, that's how you mix between songs. It's very simple, it's very easy, and it's not as complicated as it might sound. It's just two sliders. We also have a Bluetooth connection, which can allow you to connect to a phone. 
a pretty progressive move by the company considering Apple is killing the headphone jack. This also serves as an audio interface, so it does render this expensive piece of useless equipment, you know, completely useless. We have four microphones here with phantom power built into the piece of equipment. So it means we can have four condenser mics like this that sound fantastic and they're great for radio. And we don't need to buy individual boxes. The old system was you would have to buy one of these. We don't have to do that anymore. You would try to have the microphones broadcast using this and you'd have to control things here and then use an electronic sliding machine over here for this. It was too complicated. It was awful. I have faith in my playlist. Usually I would go on between two, three songs and give a little bit of a brief introduction. Sometimes a little news thing. There's something breaking during the last couple hours. But this is a special occasion. I'm giving you a tour. so. This is the recording studio. Used to receive a lot of use three, four years ago for no real good reason. Anything you can do in here, you can do in there. It was kind of just obtuse and complicated. Uh, we're gonna try and do something with this later because we would have like two phantom microphones, like uh, two condenser mics in here, and two in there, and then we're good. We it, this is all useless, this is just stupid. Uh, if I have to spend six hours trying to explain how to use a piece of equipment, it's not good for college radio. This is the record player. We need a new one. There's a storage room back here where a lot of those records come from and where the turntable can play them. This dates back to, I think, at least the 60s because there's singles in here. And a lot of this stuff is, this is shocking, a lot of this stuff you really can't find on Spotify or Apple Music. This is alternative, before alternative was really a, a genre. I mean, these are, some of these artists are some real zeros, I'll be honest. But, I mean, they're fun. Like, um, I only want to be with you, a dog and butterfly, happiness, it's a girl like you, John Madra, David White, and Len Berry. I mean, I don't think you could ever... Where, where would you find out that these even exist other than if you went into a storage room? Then you have all these records are some real zeros as well. Like... I'm just drawing a blank on this. Like, I've never... I mean, someone's probably gonna know this, exactly what it is, and say I'm stupid, but I'm sorry. Oh, Bad Company! I know them. Mm. See, not too many people know what Bad Company is. That's a great example. Not, not many people unless they're in the classic rock. And we have even older records back here. I think maybe these date to the 40s, early 50s, when the station was um, first coming back under KSLU. Uh, they got shut down as WCAD. They broadcast for real until, as you see in one of those articles, 1941, when the Federal Radio Commission demanded that they they move frequency and um, keep the frequency tolerance of their radio station to be better than what it was. So in other words, if they were supposed to be at 1520 on your AM dial, it better be at 1520 and not 1521 or 1519 because it could interfere with other stations that were nearby. And apparently it would have cost them $4,000 to do some upgrade and the trustees of St. Lawrence University said we're not going to do that. So in 1941, it was all over with the understanding that they would keep the radio program on at St. Lawrence University and feed the programs via telephone line to WSLB in Ogdensburg. Yeah. You know that, though. So that's what they did until one of these articles here where they, where they decided to make their own station, the KSLU. And they were, they were going to use what was called a closed circuit station which means that, in theory, no one off campus would be able to hear them. So they took the output of their AM transmitter and they fed it to a variety of things. It was one transmitter and it fed through coaxial cable a little coupler in every dormitory and every room that they wanted to be heard in. So there could be one in 
what's the name of the dormitory? Uh, Sykes, Sykes, Dean Eaton. So there, it would have to be in the cellar, and it was connected then through this one big coaxial cable back to the transmitter, which was in the in the uh, student center, which is, what's that called now? Um, the Sullivan Student Center? It used to be Noble. Yes, downstairs in the Noble Center. Yeah, all right. Uh, all right, here's KSLU Studios, Noble Center, former bookstore area. Look at this. They were... Is this really what it was? That's what it was like when I was there. So it's pretty elaborate, 1970. Wait know? a second. This is the whole studio? Yeah. Is Could that impressive? This is very impressive. And this is not even true because here, this part was a record storage area. So this may not have been the way it was when I was there. They may have co-opted this part too. But they had all this stuff. It was big. Wires? No, they had this one transmitter in the student center, and they had this fed this coaxial cable between all the other buildings. This, this is the distribution center for that, and there had to be taps. When I got there, they had this one really big transmitter in the basement of the student center, and there was a couple of problems. One, by then, not a lot of people were listening to AM radio then. Yeah, yeah, FM started to... FM started to be, like in the mid-80s, was not only started, it was fine. So <laughs> so that was a problem. The other problem was is this transmitter had poly bichlorinated... Right, no, PCBs. It was PCBs. PCBs. Polychlorinated biphenyls. And they were making food next door because this was a student center yep. before the new one. So anyway, and they thought the idea of having these dangerous chemicals near where they were making food was a bad idea. So they had to get rid of it. So they got rid of it. So that was it for the end of AM. But, the re but then they said, well, KSLU still has to be someplace. So they started broadcasting from the cable system. So they did this, what's called a lossy cable system. <laughs> this is coaxial cable, <laughs> right? <laughs> and uh, what this does is it conveys the signal from one end to the other because it has this shield on it. Hey, let me zoom in on the shield the thing. <laughs> okay. Yeah, there, we got an idea. Shield on it, right? Uh, hold on. Let me zoom in. This is you're gonna get an F. Because of that, it keeps all of the radio frequency in this cable and it goes from one end to the other and it's awesome. But let's say that the shield had notches in it. Then some of the RF would leak out. And if the notches were just so right, they wouldn't leak out too much, but it would leak out enough so that if you had an FM radio nearby, you could pick up the station. Yeah, so the internet, I mean, you stand as just as good a chance as anybody now. Yeah. On Radio Garden. What is a Radio Garden? Radio Garden is the best thing. It's an app. It's an app. It's, and it's, um, it's a fun thing. Doesn't sound like they're doing too good today. Oh, yeah. 
They have a frequency? Yeah. Why, so why did St. Lawrence kind of collapse in on itself and Clark's and maintains it? Started. Okay, how to cook dinner in Because this is us. Well, that's a very good question. So, I think the feeling was is that St. Lawrence University had a radio station with a professional staff and that they didn't really have a advisor or any people on staff who wanted to tackle the responsibility of this was in the 80s and 90s of, of working with students for a student radio station because uh, there's a lot of rules and stuff that you have to do and you'd have to it's difficult and they didn't and plus there was no frequencies available by then mostly because of you K106. 1380 CKLC. From all of us at CFMK 96.3 FM. Because most of the stations were take they were allocated to Canadians because up here on the border they were, you know, Ottawa and Cornwall and Prescott. They all have stations that didn't even use some of them. So there were no frequencies left. So that's why that didn't happen. That's why that didn't happen. And Clarkson did it because they, being engineers, were into doing it all themselves and uh, I think their station started, WTSC started in the 50s. And they did it themselves and they got a borrowed transmitter and they just have kept it up ever since. I'm not sure, I don't think it was KSLU, I think it was either the Potsdam station or the Clarkson station, but they did things like they were making fun of their classmates. Yeah. And people would call in and oh man, it just wasn't, if somebody had caught them or if they, it was bad. And I guess that that's what St. Lawrence didn't want to have happen. So. Did you feel dumb yet? I can never feel dumb when I'm in a room with you, Dylan. Hey. Bring balls. This one's from August 6th. Is this the one you read? Hi, Charles. Hi, Henry. Hi, Charles. Hi, Dylan. We're all brought here on a very special occasion. Hi, I'm Montreal Claire. Hi, I'm Dylan Gaffney. What show do you guys got? Dirty Sliders on Case of the Wednesday nights at 7. Be there, be square. Yeah, I think Charles came up to me at raft day and uh, started peppering me with a little couple questions about if I wanted a radio show. And I said, I, I thought it would be kind of fun. So um, came back, kind of touched base again a few weeks later. He said he was still getting things kind of figured out. And then uh, Hunter and I talked in class. Yeah, so the way things. I found out was kind of uh, Charles and I have the saga of three hour jaunts that we spend time together. They come about at random times in that rhyme or reason where we'll just kind of run into each other and then be together for sometimes until about 3 a.m. Um, and one of those nights, one of those jaunts, it came up in conversation that he's bringing back Case Slew, which I had heard him mention before but never knew how large of a part he played in it. And uh, I agreed to do a show. I didn't know how much of what I thought the radio would be. Turns out radio is exactly what you want it to be and there's not really any boundaries or limits to uh, what you can what you can make it so you can have a lot of fun with the people you bring in each night's always gonna be a little different which has been a lot of fun so when you look at radio and you look at newspapers like the hill news what's the big difference you think of <laughs> no detachment between yeah. opinion and what's being given to the masses this is a much more direct or instant gratification, right? It's and I think it's probably more digestible because it's more of a personal level. It's less formal, easier to process, more relatable. Well, do you know anything about listenership? Do you know anyone that listens in live, oh, or yeah. is it? Oh, for sure. We've definitely We've got a cult put following. it out. We put it out to a lot of people. Um, Had a couple call callers come in. We recently started social media for KSOU Sound. Yeah. Uh, go follow, follow us on Instagram. Uh, yeah, I mean. There's definitely a scholarship. I'd say that we probably have the most listeners, comparatively. My name is Nate Littlefield. What's your show? The Dirty Slider. What's the viewership like? Well, you know, <laughs> it's not good. Probably zero or maybe one. It's not doing so hot right now. We're hoping to have more, so tune in Wednesday nights at 7. <laughs> Stop. I bet the one thing I wanted. Content. Just have someone in there doing something, anything at all. 
And I think it's that level of freedom that has made a lot of these shows really unique. I'm tired of doing that. Um, and I think the one thing that... The one thing that I'm proudest of is that when I was a freshman, I don't think anyone listened. Do you? Do you? Do you? No, I, I agree. The uh, Blues Day 2s. Tuesday, 9 o'clock, that's never show. Tuesday, so every day seems to have at least one show. And Blues Day 2s has at least, from what I can gather, maybe 100 listeners. And they're active listeners. Um, they look for the show, there's a social media page for it. When you have a show that students here are interested in, you're gonna have a show that students elsewhere are interested in. And Blues Day 2s has actually a following of listeners at Hobart. I didn't see that coming. And that's Olivia and Emma's doing. They're awesome. Um, I think, I'm not sure if they're se I think they are seniors. Turns out, apparently they wanted a show here. I learned this at the club meeting we had, where people were getting picked for DJs and stuff. Well, it's not really getting picked, it's just if you show up, you get the slot. So what ultimately happened was, um, in this meeting, Emma reveals she wanted a show for four years. So we missed four years of Emma and Olivia and their, you know, awesome content that's getting attention for the place. So it's that kind of thing. I just, it, so it, it's not just for, it's not just for St. Lawrence because it's internet based now. But it's, it, it's something that students want to listen to anywhere at this point when I think about it. It's uh, for the people. It's for the people. I, I, I have no right to dictate what a show should be about unless it's like really wacko. Uh, and it's outside the bounds of acceptable behavior. I don't care. Just so long as you get something out there. You wanna... You wanna send us off with, uh, quick radio? Yeah, sure. Message right. right here? Actually, I have to plan for that now, seeing a stupid advertisement. You're listening to KSLU, broadcasting live from St. Lawrence University next to the Java Barn. Broadcasting continuously since 1944 in some iteration, more or less. I'm Charlie Siratek, signing off for the night. You've been listening to the Musical Mystery Tour at KSLU. And we're going to sign off with The Cure, Just Like Heaven. That's always a nice one. This last song was King in a Catholic Style. It's very fun to do after a while. <laughs> <laughs>